Hello everyone and welcome to the Macro Cafe episode 28. I am your host, The Cowboy. This is Elliot Wave Cafe. Let's get started. All right, today we're going to take a look at Bitcoin. I haven't done a Bitcoin video in about a month and, um, you know, we've been covering every single week the rest of the assets and, and what's going on uh, in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and the others. But we have really haven't talked about Bitcoin much and I think uh, it's due for an update. And I'm trying to get this out about once a month. So, um, you know, things are interesting. I mean, obviously, we're we're uh, still in a sideways consolidation in here. We've been at it since last time we've talked. For the past few days, we're trying to climb, maybe overtake this $21,000 level. And I have a bunch of interesting charts to show you and counts. So stick with me. Um, you know, go ahead and subscribe on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter on here. You can find me at Elliot Cafe. You know, I got all kind of charts and comments and, uh, you know, sometimes trade ideas, things like that. So go ahead and follow me up there if you if you if you don't mind. And then you can also find me on the pro trading room. This is, uh, you know, my private trading room up here. This is the link that takes you there. You know, if you need any help with Elliott Wave, you know, I have conversations with the guys in there all the time. You know, they show me their counts. Um, you know, I have regular updates, videos, uh, trade ideas. Uh, we follow everything from macro assets to Bitcoin altcoins uh, and, and everything in between. We got a chat room. So try that out if you if you want. Okay, so um, let's um, let's keep going on on Bitcoin. I got some um, some charts to show you. And, and listen, I, I've been I've been looking at this chart, and I'm trying to find out kind of where we are in this uh, phase with what's going on in Bitcoin overall. And because it's been in such a low volatility environment, it's been just kind of moving sideways here for 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 weeks on end, and is not really doing much. And I think this is the case, uh, you know, with the rest of the altcoins. They seem to get a little excited every once in a while, you know, push higher, and then they fall back into uh, some tight trading ranges. So. Um, you know, obviously we've had a big decline already. So I think the panic phase kind of, you know, finished up in that um, June 18, between June 16 and June 18th, when we've had the major flush in Bitcoin and in altcoins and uh, in the markets overall. And then I think we're following in this kind of discouragement phase that we are right now. We're getting a little bit of excitement, you know, here and there, every time we kind of see some spikes, but overall it's a pretty discouraged market. So I think we're in this phase. Um, I'm assuming that we're not far, um, you know, before this is all over, we might be trying to climb our way out of it. And I think we're probably starting to build this kind of wall of worry, this kind of anxiety move where, where, you know, you don't really believe it. You know, maybe we believe it. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of towing with our sentiment in here. What's going on? You know, the S&P 500 has been rallying. The Dow Jones had a pretty strong rally on Friday. And, you know, for the past four days, actually, it's been, been screaming higher. So what's going on with Bitcoin here? I think that we, we might be possibly trying to climb out of this level. Even if we get one more low, you know, I think that this discouragement and, and, and uh, you know, this kind of panic phase, I think it's over. And, and it's probably going to be followed by uh, some kind of a... Uh, you know, pull back in here and, you know, if not an ABC correction, maybe the beginning of a new uptrend. So we're, we're just, uh, you know, we're just kind of thinking about it. And I just wanted to kind of put this, this uh, cycle phase in front of you. They come in different forms. And, and this is one that I kind of like because it shows kind of, you know, nicely what you have head and shoulders, when you got warnings, when you got to get out and, and, you know, previous levels that if they get, get taken out then you know that's a signal that you're about to rally and you know they kind of line up pretty well with um, uh, you know Elliott wave structures as well so let me jump over to the counts that I have for you and I'm going to start with this uh, trending model now this is not my model this model I, I um, you know I saw David Keller from um, you know stock charts uh, using it uh, a couple of times here regarding to S&P 500 and I just adapted it here to Bitcoin it's pretty much pretty simple you have a, a long term uh, model up here at the top you got a more of a medium term and then you got a short term model down at the bottom so this one it's probably you know uh, uh, upwards of a year 
uh, when you're looking at the time frame that way. And then this one, it's probably, you know, I don't know, anywhere between four and six to 12 months, something like that. And then this one, it's more shorter term, you know, uh, in terms of uh, weeks to a couple of months, maybe. Um, and what you're seeing here, you see the orange um, lines, the orange kind of squares that I have in here, these orange zones are basically showing you where we have the big bear markets uh, in this longer term cycle. And, and they're kind of starting uh, when they drop below the zero and then, uh, you know, they terminate when you start to climb above zero. And we're trying to kind of project that where the prices are going. Then the green one, since it's medium term, you know, it's a little bit more uh, uh, responsive to the price. And you can see actually it moves you into a bear market much quicker than necessarily the orange one is in here. So it's giving you a signal to either get out of the market or stay short or, or just, you know, go to cash, go to whatever. Um, and, and you know, how long that takes. And then it's the first one also to respond to the upside when you're starting to kind of turn over. So it's just a simple model. And then this one at the bottom, I don't really follow a lot. I mean, it's just a very, very short term and it's got a lot of whipsaw. Um, so, you know, based on this, I'm looking at this green. And it looks like we're starting to climb towards the upside. Now, <clears throat> we don't have a full bullish signal from it yet. I think it's probably going to come in a couple of weeks if it manages to climb back into the uh, above the zero territory. So I'm going to keep a close eye on this. And, um, you know, I think once that happens, then I'll be, you know, quite confident that there could be some time to initiate some long positions here in Bitcoin. And so then I'm still kind of careful and, and just waiting for more confirmations. The longer term model, it's a little bit slower. I guess it just... Um, you know, it's maybe good to to have an overall view of kind of where the market is. And, and, you know, longer term, we're still obviously in a big, large decline. You know, we could still be in it, even if you're starting to climb higher. But until you're actually, uh, you know, taking some of the swing highs over, uh, this model is not going to push uh, to the upside much. So, but I'm waiting for it to kind of turn and then get a signal from this one. Now, the other one that I'm watching closely is where the price is in relationship with the 200 day moving average. So just a very simple model. I talked about this before and um, you know basically what it looks at is that when do you go below the 200 what is the green shaded area when you go above the 200 uh, and that's kind of uh, signals you that maybe the market is about to change course uh, and as long as you're staying in this kind of green zone you know it's not really suitable for long trades so that's kind of what I'm looking uh, right now. It's resting at about 24,800. That's where uh, the 200 day moving average is. The price is at about 21,000. So, um, you know, we still have a little bit more to go until we're, we're, we're trying to kind of get ourselves out of this hole, out of this, uh, you know, discouragement phase and more to a, uh, you know, to something more impulsive. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm watching. Um, and the next thing I want to show you, it's something interesting. So this is the correlation between the Nasdaq 100 and Bitcoin. Um, and I think these markets continue to stay, uh, you know, remain kind of highly correlated. And the point that I want to bring here is the fact that, you know, Bitcoin, the question is like, who's, uh, uh, you know, who's leading who and who's giving us signal, right? And how are these markets uh, uh, correlated so we can, uh, you know, find out uh, what's the next move that's about to happen in here. So to do that, you kind of go back in history and, and you're looking at some of these uh, and it's been trending, you know, pretty well. Um, you know, let's say, I mean, back to maybe even 2021, I don't have the chart uh, um, all the way up there because I'm trying to focus just on, uh, you know, the sell off when we kind of found the top in the markets and kind of where we are at the moment. But if you look here, the you know, Bitcoin found a top in November 10, uh, 2021. And then, um, you know, NASDAQ followed about 12 days later. It found a top in the NASDAQ. Now, you know, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, they only topped in uh, January. So just a little bit later, uh, which, you know, kind of here was telling us that, you know, all these riskier assets and, uh, um, you know, high beta, uh, um, you know, trades and, and uh, assets, you know, they were... Uh, starting to react much, much faster to an upcoming bear market, right? They were trying to signal an upcoming bear market, um, you know, much faster than, than, than the rest of them. So if you can see in here, uh, you know, Bitcoin topped and it started to sell lower. Um, and then about 12 days later, we got a top in NASDAQ. Uh, so Bitcoin was kind of leading the decline, right? It was the first time uh, that it was kind of signaling that something is about to happen in here. If you can see down at the bottom here, I have uh, the Bitcoin price action just to kind of see them individually. And then here is the NASDAQ, right? So NASDAQ was still kind of hovering around, you know, we don't really believe it, whatever. And, and then finally we started to get a sell off. Then 
one more time you know bitcoin was climbing if you're looking here maybe you know towards the end of january beginning of february right you start to have a little bit of a retracement here in bitcoin and nasdaq was continuing to push lower which means that bitcoin was not really responding so it was the first one um that did not really believe that this sell-off it's going to be you know long lasting or there's probably going to be an upcoming rally and, and sure enough not long after bitcoin uh, you know created this divergence you know obviously it rallied higher and the nasdaq followed through so from all these indications you know if you're looking at it it almost seems like you know big bitcoin is signaling what's about to happen in the rest of the markets right it's it's still a small asset right i you know what is it uh, i don't know i don't even remember if it's a trillion or not yet but or, or if it's lower I, i'm sorry but i <laughs> i don't know exactly where we are on the market cap um uh, but here we are right we're still holding these lows we haven't able to break lower and we're actually trying to climb out of here right we're trying to get towards twenty one thousand. the nasdaq made a new low right and this happened in uh, um well actually this well, i'm talking about these lows back in here were in uh, uh the nasdaq made a low in june 18th bitcoin followed um on uh, the nasdaq made a low in june 16 bitcoin followed on june 18th this is when we had the big capitulation in the market but on october 13 nasdaq made a new low and bitcoin did not right bitcoin just kind of retested the lows uh, this was the day when we've had that inflation numbers and all the markets sold lower after the inflation data and then they quickly reversed at the middle of the day or soon afterwards and then we started to rally and then we haven't looked back in any of these markets to retest those lows so that october 13 is very important um now bitcoin is trying to rally out of there um nasdaq is still rallying it's a little bit more timid uh but you know what if bitcoin was signaling all along through the fact that it wasn't able to break these lows um that actually you know it were trying to find some lows in this market and there's probably some rallies coming so it's important keep an eye on this because if bitcoin breaks lower if bitcoin fails out of here then that's going to be a pretty strong signal again to the rest of the markets that you know we're getting another leg lower in the risk assets so i just kind of wanted to show you um you know this correlation in here i'm sure you're familiar with it but i just wanted to kind of dive down in some of this discrepancies and some of these divergences between what's happening in the nasdaq and uh, and in bitcoin now um let's jump over and do a little bit of a candlestick analysis in here and volume um and what this does basically shows you uh, you know how much volume kind of comes into this uh price into the daily price bars and uh, i mean look at this one right back there we've had a the, this was the biggest this was the mid of the move this was the larger third wave lower and and it was uh you know this decline happened uh, you know with a big fat candle big huge volume in here and then we kind of started to die off now we're starting to pick up a little bit more volume since uh let's say september 24 first uh you know september 22nd and then we die off again and now we're starting to pick it back up so look october 25th pretty strong and you're looking at october 26th and now we're dying off again right maybe it's because you know obviously today is saturday yesterday was friday so you know we're not really getting a whole lot of moves out of here just well so this concerns me slightly i do like the fact that we're we're pushing higher here in higher volume but i want to see a continuation of this happening i want to see this you know staying fairly high and fairly consistent otherwise we're probably going to fall apart again and have maybe more like a triangle a move but uh you know definitely uh you know let's continue to kind of study this and keep an eye on it because because these two candles in here you know they're not looking bad especially this one back here right from october 26th it's uh you know the highest volume that we've seen basically since this decline back in june so that's that's probably a little bit encouraging now also i wanted to show you the correlation with uh the us dollar and um, I, I watched this uh, i showed this chart before uh, basically all this uh, um you know blue or purple zones they show you periods of of uh, pretty uh, good dollar strength and then what bitcoin does during those periods and the correlation here it's it's inverted uh, um you know at least if you're looking back about 52 weeks right it's at about uh, minus uh, 80 so negative correlation uh inverse correlation between bitcoin and the dollar um so we have the highest move in the dollar it happened in september 28th um of this year right so just uh about you know just about a month ago now since then uh the dollar was not able to make a new high so the question is do we have a top in the dollar and if we do 
um, what's happening with Bitcoin next. Well, if we do have a top in the dollar and the dollar continues to correct or even reverse from here, then Bitcoin is likely to continue to push. Now, there is a scenario which I talked about in, in the macro uh, cafe last week, I think, and even a couple of weeks ago, that there still could be a triangle in here in the dollar and one more push higher and then we can reverse that would mean a triangle in bitcoin another push lower and then we we'll reverse out of here. so this is kind of what we're watching if we're, we're going to continue to watch the dollar for signs and if it continues to push lower and starts to create more of an impulse there's levels that we're watching you know to confirm that we actually you know a top has been established then with more confidence we'll be able to say yeah i think bitcoin it's probably uh going to continue to rally from here on out so pay attention to this one because it could be very simple if the dollar starts to do something like this then then bitcoin will will start to rally and push to the upside and and you know revisit let's say uh you know 40,000 50,000 whatever level um you know where we're going to have resistance up um you know up higher so, um, you know, that's kind of what's going on in the dollar. And these are just a few interesting charts that I, that I wanted to show you. I also wanted to show you what happened in the Dow Jones. Um, you know, huge outside day right there uh, on October 13th. Or that's exactly when, when all these markets kind of uh, at least found a temporary bottom. And since then, we've been rallying strongly. Now, I posted some charts, I think, on Twitter. Um, I still think that we're in a big major decline. Uh, and, and we're looking at this move out of here as a B wave still with another C wave to come. But if Dow Jones manages to climb back above 34,281, that's the high from August 16, if it manages to do that, I think that uh, the bear market is over and we're going to probably push to new all-time highs. It might take a few months, right, because you're going to go up, you're going to correct, but I think that's going to be the first signal that we're going to get and these markets are, are, are ready to push uh, much, much higher. So just keep an eye on the, on the Dow Jones because... Um, uh, it's been a very, very sharp rally, and if it doesn't turn from here, right, it's gotta, it's gotta do it fairly soon. I mean, this is a big resistance right here, about 33,200, right? So maybe we can allow it to go all the way up there for a B wave, but it's already getting very, very deep. So, uh, that's kind of what I'm watching on the markets. Okay. Let's jump over and take a look at the counts, and I'm going to come back to this, uh, in a little while. So uh, our longer term count is that this was a wave cycle too. Um, you know, when we had this uh, big sell off in uh, when was this in March 2020, right? This was the COVID kind of crash that we've had. Wow, it, it seems like, uh, um, you know, a long time ago. And, and, it's, and it's, I don't know, uh, time, it's, it's, it's playing tricks with my mind. I don't know what's with you guys, but like, it's all kind of very, very blurry. Uh, so, you know, second wave low, I think, uh, to a WXY pullback. And then since here we're running into an impulse and we terminate, we have a top here in the wave one on November 10th, 2022. Now you will see some other counts out there that are looking at this as uh, this being the top, let's say of a wave three, and this is a wave A, that's a B, and then you know people are looking for a C wave out of here for a wave two in some kind of a flat. And I don't think that's the case. I don't. And the reason that is, is because if you're combining, if you're looking at Bitcoin in relationship and in correlation with the rest of the assets, with the rest of the, you know, with the equity markets, NASDAQ, S&P 500, Dow Jones, whatever, all the other ones, those do not have this type of a structure. We do not have flat formations. And I don't think that Bitcoin does either. So if those assets are in a wave to pullback, then Bitcoin must be in a wave to pull back as well. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why don't you put the wave one back here and it can still be a wave two through a flat formation? And the reason that is, is because, you know, I think those markets topped with the fifth wave in here and I have to put a fifth wave up here as well for Bitcoin. That's why I'm uh, and, and, you know, that's why I continue to keep this as a wave one uh, uh, up into this November 10 high and not back in here. You know, I hope this explanation makes sense, but let me know if it doesn't. Let me know what you think in the comments. But the thing is, you know, no matter what, even if it, you think it's an ABC or if it's just a straight wave to pull back, um, uh, you know, just a simple double zigzag in here, I still think that, you know, if we're finding a low in here, right, the, the next move higher is, uh, the next move is going to be to the upside, either as a fifth wave or as a larger third wave. Um, and we're going to continue to, to, to stay bullish. Now, the market's pulled back here exactly at 78.6 Fib of this latest advance uh, of this wave one. And that uh, sets at about 17,865. So if wave two is present, no further lows are allowed. Uh, a new low would change the decline from 69K 
to an impulse, which means that the move from November 10 would become an impulse in a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? What that would do is that would force you to uh, think about having an ABC pullback and then another sell-off, with the exception that if this is wave C of a flat, then that would not happen and you would push higher. And I already gave you the reasons why I don't think it's a flat. First of all, it's a very ugly flat. And second of all, um, you know, looking at the rest of the markets, I think they topped back here, not back here. So um, that's kind of where we are in this one. And here is the count that looks at it as a as an impulsive move. So if this was a wave one cycle top and it finished in a fifth wave cycle, I'm sorry, this is the super cycle and wave five cycle, then uh, you're pushing back here in the primary and then you're having a wave wide cycle decline. So one, two, three, triangle in four, down in five. If this happens, I think that you're probably going to get a B wave and you're not going to get a move to new all time highs. Uh, so you're going to get an A, maybe up in B between 38 to 50%, maybe 618, uh, usually kind of what B waves go. They don't really go that high unless you, because if you have a flat, uh, you know, then you can you have to go up about 88 to 90%. It is not a flat because you have a, um, you know, you would have a five wave decline. Sure, it could become a flat, uh, and hopefully I don't confuse you here. I'm sorry because I'm running around like this, but let's say that you're not making a new low. You could still have this count valid by having a big flat in the wave two in a way that happens like this, right? A, B, C, and now you're doing from here, you're doing an A, B, C, and you're pushing a flat, right? And then you sell lower in a C wave. And that's how you would have uh, a flat formation since you haven't made any low. But, but that's, you know, I think that's towards kind of the, the, the bottom of my list in here for right now. I'm watching to see if we can get a, a five way structure and that should, you know, sell off, let's say towards, um, just above the 10 to $12,000 level on a, on a, on a final kind of, kind of sell that we'll, we'll be getting in here. Now let's take a look, uh, quickly at the moving averages. Uh, and we're still, you know, we're still below a lot of these kind of major ones. You know, we just barely climbed above the 50 right here, right? Which sits at about uh, 19,000, maybe 800. The 200 week sits at about 23,800. The um, 200 day moving average sits at about 24,767. And this one is the 350 day, which is much higher. So um, just like I've showed before, I think it's important important it's imperative that we climb and close above these levels right and depending on how fast that happens uh the market is going to take its time I, I don't think even if you climb straight up uh it's going to need time to kind of catch the 50 it's going to have to cross above the 200 it's going to have to cross back above this 200 week as well and if the price let's say climbs higher like that right you're probably going to start to get pullbacks right to allow for the averages to kind of catch up and then even if you push much higher than that, then you're probably going to come back and have some retest. So, so there is no real rush to, you know, jump into Bitcoin uh, at this moment. Uh, uh, you know, it could work. It could not because you could, there's still a chance that you could make new lows, right? But from a more safer perspective, um, you know, waiting for it until it actually starts to kind of get out of here for those trend models to start to turn, right? That would be something where, you know, I would think that the institutions will look at, um, you know, as 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 entry points, um, you know, for for longer term uh, accumulation and longer term entries. Not to say that, you know, uh, you didn't have plenty of chances to accumulate Bitcoin at eighteen to nineteen thousand because it really hasn't gone anywhere. So, uh, you know, from from June to to October, right? So that's kind of what we're watching on the on the moving averages. And now uh, I want to take you over and, and let's discuss a little bit what's going on in the kind of the shorter time frames. And this is kind of what I'm uh, watching in the pro room and I'm doing videos about this every day. Uh, and we go over the counts and, and explanations and whatnot. Uh, but basically, um, you know, if there is a wave one that was, uh, let's say that this was, let me just go back to a 12 hour. So if this was uh, the wave too low, back here okay that was your w so abc for a w x and then another abc in here so just a simple double zigzag then this uh looked at as a leading diagonal in the wave one i talked about this even in the video in the august scenario when we're looking for this a wave and we were waiting for a b to form and then i've talked about it uh you know last month as well in in september um and 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 it still hasn't been violated so this low back here uh it's still it still holds 
and and push out of here as ugly as it looks, right? You could treat it as a leading diagonal, which is one of the ways. It's a motive wave. It's it's one of the ways to kind of climb out of, uh, you know, of a big sell-off. Now, what I'm not too happy with is the second wave pullback, which is very large. It's, it's more uh, than 100% of wave one in, in how much is kind of pulling back. But it's still valid, and and there is no real um, you know uh, time uh, analysis between wave two and wave one, right? Usually you would want let's say uh, the wave one to take about sixty one percent, you know, and then the rest of the percentage would go to the second wave. So second waves are a little bit shorter in time than waves one, right? Because if you look, uh, um, you know, at, at at the distance traveled between wave where the wave one begins um, and wave two begins they usually um you know what happens in terms of Elliott wave it's that this whole structure uh between one and two it's a hundred percent right and what happens is wave one takes about 61.8 of that and then wave two in terms of time takes uh, you know 38.2 percent so that's kind of how you're um you know you're kind of studying the time between wave two and wave one uh, and in this case, you know, this wave two, it's much, much longer. Now, you know, again, it's not a, um, you know, it's not illegal. Uh, it's totally fine. It's just very extended, um, but it, it continues to be valid. So the, the I, I've been struggling a little bit with this decline back in here. And I, you know, the more I looked at it, I'm like, I think this is an ABC, just a simple ABC through, through a, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five in a wave A. Then you have a sharp B wave uh, into 22,800. And then you sell lower in an A, triangle B, and then down in C for the wave two. And that's how you count this kind of the cleanest. You can go in some WXY variations. I think I've had them before, but it's, um, you know, just to kind of keep it simple, I think that's that makes sense. And then from from uh, October 13th, you know, you had that impulse up in this kind of wave one. And, you know, this is kind of what it's supposed to begin this larger third wave advance. This is the minor degree right there. Uh, so it would have, if it's a third wave that's just beginning, right? It would have to, 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 you know, push higher pretty strongly. I mean, even just visually, you would probably look at it to go towards 40, if not 50K by the time it would be over, right? We would be way into next year when, when this one would be finished. But you got to take some of these levels. You got to take 20 to 800. You got to take 25. You got to see a clear five wave impulse in here, even at a lower degree. And we're still just kind of struggling to kind of get that done. Uh, so if I go from a 12 hour uh, here into a six hour, Right, you'd see this uh, this wave one, then down in two. Even with this one, I wasn't too happy because it was so uh, um, extended compared with this wave one, um, and and you know it continued to kind of push higher. So you have a wave one and a wave two, so that's your ABC, and then you push higher in a one two, another one two, then you do one two small third of a third of a third here, right in a f uh, wave three. So that's the sharpest rally that you've got in the sequence. You pull down in a small four. Then you got another one, two, three, four, five, and that completes this wave three sub micro. Um, one, two, wave three sub micro, probably done, probably done in here. You have divergence on the RSI, and there, so there could be a little bit of a sell off coming in this fourth wave micro. Um, you know, just a push maybe back to the fourth wave, right? I mean, if you look at this one, it was pretty sideways, so maybe this one will just kind of sharply sell lower, and then one will push higher in a wave three. Uh, this sub I mean, you add degree and then you know you would have a wave four which would have to be maybe quite large again or maybe sharp like that um, and then maybe a push high so if you start to see something like this i think i'd be you know more inclined to start to believe that i think we have a decent low in place right i want to see a sequence that's a little bit more established and uh, this fourth wave right cannot come in the territory of this wave one whatever wave two begins you're not really supposed to go in there so that would be invalidations uh we would look so this level it's 19950 and even the sell-off did not go in there because and that's important right you have no business being below this level under any circumstance you need to stay above this okay so um you know, that's going to be the first clue that's going to tell me, listen, I think Bitcoin is in trouble and it could actually, you know, either reverse lower or continue to move sideways. But this is not the impulse that you would look for. And this is where LA wave is so important because, uh, you know, it tells you, it tells you, listen, this is what you need to see. And if you don't see it, you know, you got to get out or you got to reassess the situation, right? Because you know what to look for in the markets. 
um, if you if you if you're familiar with the wave principle it shows you and it tells you you know what signs to look for and you just gotta kind of read between those those lines and and and, and you know figure out how to position uh, based on that um, so yeah it's an exciting rally I mean it's the first one you know it's a pretty large one we haven't had one since we've had this big move you know but what if this is still a triangle right at this uh, um, let's say in this decline from a wave five top or from a wave uh, you know three top or whatever uh, one two right at the minor degree then one two three four five so one two three so impulses right and this is the tricky part about this because you can kind of count them both ways the way they look right you can even go a zigzag or a double zigzag or you can even go impulse um, and then since this is so sideways every time you see moves like that that tells you yeah, there's probably a triangle going on in here. You know, what is this? So this is that discouragement phase. <laughs> Sometimes you get, you know, uh, big moves out of here and you don't make new lows and, and, you know, you start to explode out of what looks to be a triangle formation. Um, you know, but it could still be developing, right? I mean, the, the proportion between wave four and wave two is not, um, you know, is not out of whack at all. Um, you know, the volatility is low still. Um, if you're getting a top in the markets, right, the Dow Jones kind of uh, starting to pull back, maybe the S&P 500, then, uh, you know, you're not getting a continuation in this kind of risk sentiment, uh, then Bitcoin could fall back apart into what might be a fourth wave. And that's kind of how we're counting it. This is a wave A. Uh, then you're going in an ABC here for a wave B. Uh, and then you have... Uh, what is this another uh, you know let's say a WXY in here for wave C so just a just a zigzag I mean just kind of do that really quickly a combination in here so that would be you know wave C still forming so if, think about this even if this is an impulse right it could be an impulse of uh, it's just a C wave it doesn't have to be a third wave right to become a third wave this thing needs to rally more and you kind of have to get back above this 22800 right that's it that's the this is this back in here let's see you know you, you you are still you are still susceptible to a um you know even if you climb back above this level as a triangle 22800 right even if you go there the c wave can be but but it's going to probably look way too impulsive to consider it a c wave anymore so i would in my view i think this needs to stop fairly soon to be to still be a c wave if it, if it gets back towards this this levels here 22800 and it climbs back above it um i don't think we're going to be in a c wave anymore i think that things are going to start to look uh, much more to the upside so that's another clue that i'm watching right so um going back to this model right that would mean that you would have another push lower whatever whenever this e wave will finish we're probably going to have to be followed by a d um you know pull back in d and then an e maybe a small e wave and then you can uh start to sell lower all right, so let's say that we're pushing the C wave a little bit higher. You know, this D wave, then I got to extend the fourth wave for some proportion. All right, so it could be an A, B, and then up in C like that, W, X, Y. You know, you can kind of start to measure the quality between these two waves. That are another way to kind of look at it. You can do some FIBS relationships, so C versus A, 61.8. So there's all these rules uh, when you look at triangles and guidelines to kind of how much uh, these waves are supposed to retrace in a triangle and, and you know, uh, which one is a zigzag, which one is a double zigzag, uh, you know, all those things. But uh, that would be followed by one more push lower. And that push can take us, you know, towards 14, maybe even 12K if it really wants to be something heavy, depending on what's happening in the equity markets. And only then uh, you start to rally upwards and, and you begin the, the big recovery in Bitcoin. So still be careful in here, in my view. I would just uh, continue to to you know, kind of remain cautious in here. Um, the other one that, you know, I didn't really, didn't really want to show you was, um, that's just the fifth time that I was doing some analysis a little bit earlier to kind of look at where we are uh, in terms of uh, time projection. This is what's cool about uh, Elliott Wave, this, this Motivate software, because it gives you all these, uh, um, you know, tools uh, right away incorporated. You can measure things and they're all already uh, right there for you. So if you guys want to use Motive Wave, you know, there, I think there's a link below the video that you can use, uh, um, you know, and just use that link because I'll probably get a little bit something, um, you know, if you don't mind. This way you, you support me, you support the channel uh, moving forward. But uh, the other one I was looking at and I was contemplating this, I'm like, man, you know, could this still be... Uh, you know, some kind of an ending diagonal already in this uh, wave five. 
you know, will this throw a lot of people cold water and this is actually a one, two, three, four with an ending in five? Well, yeah, I'm getting a signal here. It's just it's extremely rare for an ending diagonal to be a truncation, um, you know, which means that the uh, um, end um, of this kind of, uh, th this wave, this fifth wave is supposed to move, um, you know, below the wave three, under the wave three, right? Otherwise, it remains truncated. So usually ending diagonals, you know, they're not really truncated. But um, this could be one way to, you know, kind of, twist this a little bit right uh, and then you would still get an abc decline so we'll see we'll come back to this if it if it ever happens this way right if it's just you know a three wave move up and then a move lower you know and then we'll be like yeah i think this was a you know this was the structure but you know um i think it's a little bit too far ahead let's let's first try to see if we can get uh, you know some kind of a climb out of here and then uh you know, then we'll, we'll, we'll revisit this. But again, just to kind of recap, this remains, uh, uh, you know, kind of my, my, uh, my main interpretation. These, these two, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly content with both of them. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still very surprised that even underneath this much pressure, um, from the equity markets to main lows, Bitcoin held pretty, pretty well. So maybe it's the one that's giving, you know, the all clear signal here shortly that, uh, you know, we're ready to rally in, 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 um, let's say at least some kind of a recovery of a larger correction in the markets, uh, upwards or maybe even, even new highs. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of debating, uh, between these two. And then this is the other one that would tell us, um, you know, still be cautious in here because if we're getting pullbacks, right, there still might be another low to really send that everyone into a tailspin. Um, and only then we're actually recovering out of there. So that's why I even made a video, I don't know, last week when I said this is a make and break moments for these markets. Uh, and that's across Bitcoin and, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies and, and the other assets where we're, we're, we're deciding what's going on in here. We'll see if Fed is going to pause. What does that mean? You know, if they're going to pause or, or if they're going to pivot, right? Or if they're going to start sending some signals out there that they're worried about this and that and the other. Uh, we're not really going to know for sure. Uh, and, and even if they pause, does that mean that the markets are going to rally, right? What if the markets are getting worried about recessions and, uh, you know, deep recessions? I mean, we have inverted yield curves. Does that mean that, um, you know, when they're actually easing, uh, you're actually, uh, you know, having crashes in the market. I mean, if you look at period, uh, previous periods in here, it doesn't mean just because the Fed is easing, you're going to rally. No, the rally begins actually when they're towards the end of the easing cycle. So um, I don't think we're out of the water just yet. I mean, just kind of be cautious. I would not, uh, um, you know, uh, become, uh, you know, super, super bullish in here and just throw everything at it. Um, you know, just kind of judge sentiment, judge the price action, you know, look at the Elliott wave structures, stuff that I've showed before regarding the moving averages, the trends, uh, and, and then, you know, at some point you got to put money to work, but you want to have the odds in your favor as much as possible. So guys, again, I appreciate you being here. Um, you know, don't forget to subscribe and like, and visit me in the pro room as well. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.